Hey guys, and ready here back with another video update. Um, I got this old uh, horror mag that I pulled out of the basement uh, that uses a background. It's called Are You Going? I picked, I bought this back in uh, 2003. Um, I don't think they make this anymore. I've never seen any other issues um, since. Um, this is the House of a Thousand Corpses uh, issue. Um, let's see. Take a look inside real quick. There isn't too much stuff in it. There's, um, let's see here. Go back a little bit. Cause I think there's a Found Destination 2 that came out that year. That's one of the stories in here. 28 Days Later had come out. They got a review here of uh, the British edition of um, Dawn of the Dead. Jaws, Spider Baby, House of the Thousand Corpses, which is the feature issue. Some weird kind of fan artwork or something. It's a shame this um, magazine didn't take off. Seems like a, like a House of the Dead. That's funny. It seems they could have been pretty good, you know. But it looks like Rue Morgue is the... Uh, Magazine now. Uh, choice magazine of horror fans. Alright, so I want to use the back. There's a nice picture on the back. Alright, guys, uh, I guess we should get started. Um, the first title we have is um, Pumpkinhead. Now, this is a film that I should have had a long time ago. I find that I'm a, I'm a pretty. Um, pretty fickle movie collector. I can pass up a movie nine times, but on that tenth time, for some reason, it becomes, I gotta have it, and, uh, ran into this a couple weeks ago, this title, and I was like, well, I gotta have it, so, um, picked it up used, um, I really should have bought this like, when it first came out, but, uh, the first release was, um, full frame, and I think that was the main reason why I didn't get it. This is the special edition re-release. It's got tons of stuff on there. Unfortunately, it doesn't have, uh, uh, audio commentary uh, by Stan Winston. I did have this originally on video cassette. I remember when it was supposed to come out back in 1987, and then they uh, for Halloween that year, and they pushed back on the release date. And then they were going to change the title of the movie to Vengeance the Demon, which I'm glad they didn't because that's kind of a lame title, like you know, very generic. So um, I'll have to give this one a watch again. I haven't watched this one since the VHS days. Okay, next up. We have Rambach, uh, Berlin, Berlin Undead, although um, the title is just Rambach on the, um, on, the, on, the ti on the movie as it plays. I don't know why they even bother to put Ber Berlin Undead. Maybe they probably figured that people wouldn't realize it was a zombie movie, even though you get zombies on the cover. Um, this is a really cool movie. Um, this movie is about a guy that uh, he goes to Berlin to uh, return some keys to his... Uh, ex-girlfriend and he's really going there trying the hopes to rekindle or save his relationship and but when he gets there um, he, there's like a, a, a zombie outbreak and these are the fast kind of 28 days later infected kind of zombies infected with like kind of a rabies type thing this is a really good movie the only drawback with it is that it's only an hour long I don't know if this was made for um, for German television or anything but they could have very easily just filmed a couple extra scenes and got it to at least you know, 75 minutes like it's barely it's barely an hour you know with credits which is kind of a shame but you know I'm still happy to have it in my collection all right next up we have albino farm and this is one of those um, hillbilly horror movies very similar to uh, wrong turn or the hills have eyes remake um, as you can see here, this is Chris Jericho, um, and he's okay in the movie, but like it's one of those things where he shouldn't really be on the cover because um, he's not really in the movie very much. Uh, he should have been with like with the group of kids that come into the town and talking about the legend of the albino farm or whatever. Um, the the mutants in this movie or the deformed people are really cool. There's one guy that's um, he doesn't have a bottom a bottom jaw, so it's just like like a tongue hanging from his mouth and there's another character a female which is really weird because um 
her body is smoking, but when it gets to her face, she's totally hit. It's all malformed and everything. It's like, and, then you, and I was thinking about it, I was like, well, there's no way that her body could be that fine and then her face be the only thing that's hit on her, but oh well, it is. I give this movie props too for having one of the teenage kids that come into the town is um, East Indian. And you don't really see that too much in slasher films, so I give them big props for that. I think that's supposed to be the female mutant right there. Um, this film is, is it's just so-so, you know, but the ending is really good. There's a scene, I won't really get into it, where the girl thinks she saved the final person, and then she runs into a bunch of other townies, and it kind of has like a little nice little twist on it. All right. All right so my fourth pickup is Bunny Man, or as I like to call it, Too Stupid to Live. Um, I picked this one up on a recognition of another YouTuber, and, um, basically this movie here is, is if someone decided to remake, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but instead of having a guy like Leatherface to replace him with, like, a guy in a bunny suit, um, this movie could have been a lot better than it was, and most of the problems come from the fact that the script wasn't right. They should have rewrote the script. And, and it's the setup that, you know, trying to get the people from the highway into danger is where they mess up on this movie. Because, um, basically, the, like, you know, they get run off the road by the, the bunny man in his truck. By the way, it's funny, too, because the title, they use, like, a skull and bunny ears. It would be, it would be right there as the bunny man, but it makes it look like the name of the movie is Bun Man, for some reason. But, um... They pass the truck on the road, and it uh, it kind of reminds me like the beginning of uh, Jeepers Creepers, where they're being menaced by the this truck. But the truck runs them off the road, and then it comes back later, and the guy's trying to fix their car, and he bumps the car, and it kills the guy. Like there's there's five other kids, so they take off, and they go looking for help. And there's like two scenes where they find people, and then it becomes this really big thing where they start arguing with the people and the weird thing about it is when they ask for help they don't even mention the fact that one of their friends is dead like you think you would lead with that like hey there's an emergency one of our friends is dead we need help where they they hold off on that it's, it's really awkward um i don't know another thing too is um the bunny man is part of a larger um hillbilly psychotic family and he kind of gets upstaged by the sister character. She's a much better character than the Bunny Man. In fact, they should have just called him the Cycle Bitch because that would have been much a closer representation of the movie. And the actress that played it did a really good job. But uh, this movie I can't really recommend. And another problem, too, is uh, the, the movie had a, a really cheap budget like $25,000 and, and the movie looks good for that that amount the problem was they didn't have any uh, they didn't have a budget for the special effects for the kill sequences so what they do is they just spray blood on either the victim or the person that's doing the killing and they try to get away with that which is fine but at the same time it's like watching a porn film with all the cum shots in that sense so I don't know I would only recommend this movie um, if you're drinking and you got a bunch of friends together because the, the people in this movie are really stupid like you know because technically if this movie was based on a real life incident no one would have died because they could have very easily gotten away at several points in this movie but people are just dumb like one girl runs up a tree instead of running away I mean how fast can somebody in a bunny suit run anyways I mean and of course it's got to be hot in that mask and what could they actually see you know through the bunny suit but um I don't know, but uh, I'd recommend it if you want to get drunk and have a laugh. All right. Well, next up, we have uh, Dark Floors. This is one of the Ghost House Underground uh, releases. This is such a weird movie. I guess I didn't realize that when I picked this up, but this movie is um, was made by a rock band. I guess the band's called Lordy, and it's they're kind of like. Not quite death metal. I don't know what it is because I, I watched some of the videos that are on the, this DVD, and it's uh, the music. The music isn't really kind of scary. It's not like a horrorcore or anything like that. It's just uh, really odd. But they wear makeup and they're monsters and stuff. And basically, this movie is subtitled the Lordy movie because they use 
the characters from the rock band in the movie. It's almost like as if um, Marilyn Manson decided to uh, use him and himself and his band for a horror movie as, as the creatures in the movie. Um, this movie is a lot better than I thought it would be, but the same, it's, it's kind of odd. It's, um, it's basically about a father, a single father and his daughter, who uh, they don't really specify what's wrong with her. They say she has seizures, but she acts like she has like autism. But, um, like a mild autism or whatever. And, um, he gets fed up with the doctors and he tries to leave. And he gets in the elevator with a bunch of people. And then something happens. And they get stranded in the elevator for a few minutes. And when it opens up, everything has gone to shit. The walls are all, like, rusted out and bloody. And there's corpses everywhere. And then they start getting menaced by ghosts and then monsters. And then later on in the film, zombies even. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the end of The Beyond. Um, but it's got great atmosphere. The only problem, again, with this movie is, is, is the band themselves, because the makeup for the, for the monsters and the demons and whatever, like in the band Lordy, is the same as they use in their show. Like, and it, I guess that would be a treat if you were a fan of the band. But for me, it's just like that it wasn't, uh, the makeup wasn't really all that great. You know, like, it was, it was doable, but it, it wasn't as intimidating as it could be, like, It'd be a lot cooler if it was something similar to like the people in Hellraiser or something like that. And they were upstaged by the uh, by the zombies and everything else and the corpses in the movie. But other than that, it, it's a decent watch. I'd recommend it for a rent. I wouldn't say purchase unless you can get it for really cheap. And I did watch the music videos. Um, oh, let's see. I can't really... Is it even showing the titles of them? Uh, let's see... Hard Rock Hallelujah, that was the one with the girl in the high school, and then the, what was it, then the um, cheerleaders become zombies, and uh, Love Would Be, no, Love You, A Monster Man, that one kind of, uh, kind of like it was the basis of, uh, of this movie, because it, uh, it takes place in a hospital where they're getting ready to do a surgery and then the demons show up and kill the doctors and stuff. Alright. Next up, we have Deadline, starring Brittany Murphy and Thora Birch. This is an okay movie. I remember this one came out, or I think it was before Brittany Murphy died or not, but I remember we were talking about it a lot, my friends and I, because it, cause she kind of looks like she's dead in the bathtub here. In this movie, she plays... Um, a writer who goes to this um, secluded house to write a book and then um, she gets menaced by the ghosts of the people who used to live there. This this is an okay movie. It's got lots of decent atmosphere um, but it does have one of those um, endings where you're kind of like it's kind of just left wide open as to what happened and you have to interpret for yourself what really happened in this movie. Alright, and the last title we have is The Shortcut. This is the only movie that I didn't finish for this video. I was, I was going to try to watch all the the movies, but this one I had a real hard time with. The first time I got into it, I watched um, about 10 minutes worth, and I turned it off. I tried watching it over the weekend, and I got 5 minutes into it and fell asleep. And last night, I watched 20 minutes of it, and I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, this movie is about the small town where the kids, everybody, all the kids in the town are afraid to take the shortcut because like 50 years ago some somebody went nuts and killed somebody on the path or something. Um, this movie was um, produced by, um, um, what's his face, Adam Sandler's um, Happy Madison Company. They changed the name to Scary Madison for, uh, for the release. But uh, at some point I'll, I'll try to watch this movie. I just couldn't, uh, it just seemed kind of stupid. It was, you know, like, they had the scenes where, it, like, you think it would get started and it just wouldn't get started. They kept going back to the high school and I was just like, let's get on the damn path to the shortcut for whatever reason, you know, so we can get the horror started. But, uh, I just couldn't get into it. Alright, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you later.